Hi, I'm Kevin. Welcome to my channel. Today we're going to talk about how foresters measure trees. So today I thought I'd show you the, the tools and the techniques used to measure the height of an individual tree, the diameter of the tree, and later we're going to measure the age without cutting the tree down. So today I'm standing in an area that's been harvested previously. There's lots of regeneration on the ground. Um, probably this was harvested five or six years ago, maybe a little bit more. And in keeping with uh, local regulations, the uh, logging company left um, a number of large standing trees that provides nesting habitat and, and habitat for other critters that like a vertical structure. So this is a great place to come to show you um, not so much the diameter and the age of a tree but the height of a tree because you really need to be able to see the tree from top to bottom which you can do in a in a forest that hasn't been harvested but it's a little bit more crowded and hard to do and certainly a lot more difficult to show on video. So I brought a variety of tools with me today the first of which is this. This is a hypsometer. This measures angles. Um, let me hold this to the camera and focus on it. You'll see that it measures angles. Now, it's also got a little eyepiece here, and I can look through this eyepiece. I can't see through the instrument. I have to look with both my eyes at the same time. And I see a scale. If I hold it perfectly horizontal, the scale reads zero. If I tilt it up, I get a positive number. If I tilt it down, I get a negative number. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go a known distance away from the tree, and I'm gonna use this hypsometer to measure the angle of where I am to the top of the tree, and then to the bottom of the tree. In order to do that, we're gonna to need to know the distance of the tree. So I brought along a large tape measure. There we go. There, I am now 20 meters from the tree, and we're going to keep my eye 20 meters from the tree. And I'm going to pull up my hypsometer. So, with the hypsometer now, what you're going to do is measure the angle. If I hold it horizontal, I get a zero measurement, and that's part way up the tree. Now, I'm going to measure an angle theta to the top of the tree, and then another angle theta to the bottom of the tree. I can then calculate the two lengths of the tree, um, the length above horizontal and the length of the tree below horizontal, and I can multiply them together. Some of these things have a scale. Uh, when you hold them down, you can see the scale. One is on this one, one is measuring an angle, and the other one is measuring percent. Some are calibrated for a specific distance. So if I'm 20 meters away, I would use the 20 scale if it had it, and then everything I measured was in meters. This one has a percent scale, which I like a lot more. Um, it's more flexible. So if I start at horizontal at the zero and I work my way up to the top of the tree, now I'm looking both with both eyes. One is looking into the scale here and the other one is looking at the top of the tree. And they sort of overlap in my brain. And the top of the tree is at 80, right on the nose. There's decimal places here, but it's, it's at 80 right on the nose. And if I go down to the bottom of the tree, I am at 15, 15 right on the nose. Uh, this does allow for decimal places, but I'm kind of lucky. I can then multiply those numbers by the distance that I am away from the tree. So I've got 80 plus 15, 95. 95% of 20 meters is 19 meters. That tree is bang on 19 meters. So now we're gonna measure the diameter of the tree. 
Um, that's a relatively simple thing to do. And you might think that foresters are really interested in the base of the tree, and we are. Um, we certainly are, because that's the biggest end of the tree. But um, if we were to measure the stump or the base of the tree, every time we measured a tree, that would become time-consuming and a bit cumbersome, because we'd, we'd be bending down all the time. We want a method that is, that is quicker, easier to do. So, um, what folks have come up with is a standard um, known as diameter at breast height. So we measure the diameter at chest height. Here in Canada and most places internationally, that is 1.3 meters above the ground. So um, normally every forester learns where 1.3 meters is on their body. And for me, it's right here. It's right at my, uh, at my solar plexus, basically, just at the base of my rib cage. I know that is the height. And when I measure a tree, that's the height I use. Um, if I was a little bit taller, I'd reach down. If I was shorter, I'd be reaching up, but always to, to a specific marker on your body. And uh, here in Canada and internationally, that's 1.3 meters. Um, in the States, uh, that number equates to 4.3 feet, um, which isn't commonly used in the US. The US is the one um, deviation from that standard, and they typically measure at 4.5 feet. And I do have feet on here. So if I was an American working in the States doing forestry, that would be right up to here on me. That's, uh, huh, just a little bit below my Adam's apple. Um, I, would, I would learn that spot and I would measure trees at that, at that height. So we're gonna measure the diameter of this tree. And because it's winter, um, I can't use that marker on my body because I'm on snowshoes. I'm a uh, considerable distance above the ground. So I dug down. We're going to use this tape to find 1.3 meters and then I'm going to measure the diameter. So I've measured with my tape and 1.3 meters is right here. That's where I'm going to measure the diameter. So if you're going to measure the diameter, you could use uh, calipers. They make large calipers that you can walk around with um, and you can put them around the tree and measure. Uh, standard practice to measure a couple different measurements and then uh, at right angles to each other, then take the average and that's your diameter. Another method is to use something like this. Once again, I have a slightly different tool. This is a measuring tape, just a standard measuring tape. It has centimeters on one side. So if I wrap this around the tree, I could measure their circumference. That is 102 centimeters. And I could do some math and figure out what the diameter is. Or I could flip this tape over and it has another scale. So the formula for the circumference of a circle is uh, circumference equals pi times the diameter. And so this tape is simply um, gr graduated according to that formula on the inverse. So if I wrap it around, I get a measurement of 32.5 centimeters. That's the diameter, 32.5 centimeters. So that's the height and diameter of this tree. I promised you we'd take the age without cutting it down, and I've got a cool little tool for that. This is called an increment borer. I unscrew this, and there's a sharp, uh, long, narrow piece that we call this the spoon. Always drop that close to the tree so you don't lose it. And inside here is a bit, a hollow bit, and I'm going to it's not too cold. I'm going to attach this to the handle and this forms a bit of an auger. I'm going to drill this into the tree. When I get all the way in, I am going to insert the spoon into the back end here, jam it in. We're going to do one backwards twist to break the uh, core and then we're going to pull out a core from the tree and count the rings. So once again, we do this at a standard height. Um, I'm gonna do this at 15 centimeters above uh, the ground. Um, that's what we call stump height. And uh, that is a height at which, uh, depending on the species, you will add one or two years. So I'm gonna get the age of the tree at that height. 
um, every year the tree grows it adds a ring so at that height uh, the tree is probably one or two years of age so you add one or two years of age onto that let's do this Yeah, I'm probably halfway through, maybe one more. Okay. Now we're gonna insert the spoon. Get one turn backwards, and we're gonna pull out the core. Careful not to drop it. There we go, that's the core. I'm gonna be careful not to drop it. The, the center of the tree is right here. I'm gonna try and uh, rotate it a little bit so I can show you on camera without dropping. Okay, Let me turn the camera around. So it's a little bit challenging. Let me zoom in my hand here. It's probably a little bit challenging to see on video, but there's the center of the tree and I can count the rings outward to determine the age. So I was careful and took my time and I, I counted 84 rings on this uh, core. So that's 84 years of age, plus the 15 centimeters of growth from the bottom. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this tree is 86 years of age. All right, so we know a few things about this tree now. We know its species, it's jack pine. We know its age, it's 86 years of age. We know its height, 19 meters, and its diameter is 32.5 centimeters. Uh, we can take that information and compare it uh, to other data that's been collected and formulas produced, and we can estimate the volume of that tree from, from that database. We can then extrapolate the volume of an individual tree to the volume of the site based on the density estimates from aerial photography or, or other imagery. So that's how a forester would go about figuring out how much volume was on this site before it was harvested. So another thing we can do is take the age and the height of the tree and compare that to the age and height uh, on other sites and we can calculate something called a site index or how good is this site for growing that species of tree. And you know what, I don't have my tables with me, but uh, 19 meters at 86 years of age is not a great, a great height for a jack pine. That's not a, uh, a super producing tree or a super producing site. Often you'll find jack pine 20, 22 meters tall um, at 75, 80 years of age. So uh, either that was the runt that was left behind when they harvested or, um, or this site isn't ideal uh, for growing jack pine doesn't mean it's wrong to grow jack pine here, it's perfectly natural, it just means that there are sites in this world that are more productive than this one for growing jack pine. And that's the kind of stuff foresters think about. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching, I hope you got something out of this one. If you did, please hit like, share and subscribe. As always, have a great day, I hope you get outdoors and I will see you in the next one.